Okay, these are the review questions from page 408. This question, this first one, if you read it, you have knee surgery. After the knee surgery, you're going to have some pain. Now, lots of other people have had knee surgery, and on average, um, the probability of the pain level you're going to have is indicated right here. So you have a 20% chance that you're going to have a pain level of 2. Well, what's the probability that your pain level is going to be 5? Well, all of these probabilities have to add up to 1. Add them all up, subtract from 1. So the answer to letter A should be 0.1. That's the probability that you're going to have a pain level of 5. Let's go to letter B. Well, letter B says you have two patients that have a pain level of either 1 or 2. So we're going to add those together. The probability that you're going to have this level of pain, you have about a 30% chance you have one, one of the other um, levels. Now, two people, well, if you think about that, they're independent, right? So you pick two people at random. First person has a 30% chance of having a pain level 1 or 2. And then the next person you pick could also have that pain level. Well, we're going to multiply them together because they are independent events. One patient doesn't have any influence on the next patient. So 0 0.09 is the probability that that would happen. Let's go to letter C. Whoa! Letter C says to compute the mean and standard deviation of x and show your work. Now normally, I would just put this into list 1, right? This goes into list 1, this goes into list 2, one variable statistics, and we should get the mean and the standard deviation. Now I can check my work on that, but see they say show your work on this. So how do we compute this? Well, the mean isn't so bad, the average is just multiply those. Multiply the number times a probability, number times probability, number times probability, and add them all together, and that is your average. So let's see what that looks like. So I try to squeeze all this stuff in there. So there it is. All the number times probability, number times probability, add them all together, and you should get an answer of 3.1. So the average pain level um, is 3.1. There's that. Okay, now how do you compute the standard deviation? Okay, we haven't done this in a while. Because um, early on I just kind of skipped it because we would, well not skipped it, but I said let's just use L1 and L2. But let's review how we actually do that. So, if you remember, what we do is we take the number we're interested in. Here we go again. All right. The number we're interested in, 1. Um, we're going to subtract the um, average, 3.1, and then we're going to square it. And then we're going to take the second number, and we're going to subtract the mean, and then square it. Right? We add these things together. And then the third one, subtract. So we just do this all the way to number 5. But it's a little bit different. We're going to add all these things together, right? And then we take the square root of the whole thing. Remember doing that all the way. I'll just put dot, dot, dot for number 5. But in this case, we actually have to put the probability in there. So it would be times 0.1. And this next one, ah, it ran out of room. Um, so it would be times 0.2. And then the next one would be, 3 would be times 0.2. So it's the same way, it's the number we're interested in minus the average, square it, times the probability. The number we're interested in minus the average, squared, times the probability. The number we're interested in minus the average, square it, times the probability, all the way to number 5, and then take the square root of the whole mess. Now if you do that, you should come out with... Uh, what do they say? One point. So the answer is. So, whoops. The answer for the standard deviation of this random variable is going to be 
1.136. And that's how you do this thing by, let's see, showing your work. Okay, I'm just going to do this question and then post it, and then I'll do another video for the next one. Let's see. You are making glassware, and you have a flame that can vary in temperature by, there's settings on it, so it can vary by these five different temperatures. And the probability that it's going to be each one of these temperatures is right down here. Okay, now, they have actually done the average and the standard deviation for you. So the average temperature is 550 degrees. There you go. Letter A. The target temperature is 550 degrees. Well, our target temperature is exactly what our average is, so that's actually pretty good. What are the mean and standard deviation of the number of degrees off target? And they've actually shown you what to do. So this would be our average minus our target. Huh. That is going to be zero, isn't it? Our average is 550 minus 550. So we are doing really well because our we're going to have an average of being off by no degrees. Okay. So we could indicate it like this, I suppose. Um, it's uh, our average of minus 550, our new average, right, is going to be zero degrees. That's how far we're off. Now, what about the standard deviation? Um, we could say our new standard deviation. Whoops. Let's see. Well, we are subtracting 550 from our standard deviation. No, we are not doing that because we only multiply or divide. So our standard deviation is going to stay the same. So why don't we just say uh, the standard deviation of x is going to stay at 5.7 degrees. How about that? Okay, let's go to letter B. So remember, it's much better if you read the at least read the question first before you watch this video, and maybe even try it. But uh, I'm going to assume that you're doing that. And they say, well, what if we convert the degrees to Fahrenheit, which is right here? Here's our formula, um, right there. That's how we convert from Celsius to Fahrenheit. Well, what would our new average be? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to call it, um, here's B, and I'm just going to call the new um, average Y. See, this is X over here. So our new average is going to be Y. So Y, the standard deviation of, or no, the average of Y is going to be 9 over 5 times our old average plus 32. So we just simply plug in 550 in for that formula. And what do we get? Should be 1,000. So this u sub y, our new average, is going to be 1,020. Two. So, now what about the standard deviation? So the standard deviation of our new standard deviation is going to be the same process. False. All we're going to do is multiply it by 5 over 9. We don't add or subtract. So the old standard deviation was uh, 5.7. So it's going to be 9 over 5 times our old standard deviation. What do we do with that? Well, we plug in 5.7, what we got from the last problem. 5.7 goes in for that number. Multiply them together, and what do you get? And the answer is 10.26. 10.26. All right. Come on. There, finally. And... Done.